welcome to part two where we are going to continue on setting up what we need to be able to compile our first application on the Amiga. Uh, what we'll be doing here is installing some useful utilities. Um, we'll be installing the LA file compression utility. Uh, those are files that are ending in the .lhx extension. Uh, we'll also need the zoo compression utility as well. Uh, ending in .z00 uh, because one of the utilities I use is a particular editor called Emacs and you can get micro Emacs for the Amiga and in order to install it you have to extract it using LA and then further extract the actual binary using Zoo so that's what we're going to be doing here uh, but before any of that, we're actually going to be installing the Aztec C compiler. This in particular is Aztec version 5. And I'm just going through the process of installing it. Um, I did tell the truth there by saying that I hadn't read the readme the readme file, so let's go ahead and quickly read it because you never know. There might be something in there that's useful. I'm trying to get by at the minute by using Notepad, but um, I'm, I use Emacs like eight hours a day at work and uh, whenever I work on hobby projects at home, so I really wanted to install it for the Amiga. The alternative version is to actually have the emulator running side by side with Emacs on the host operating system, which you'll see me doing at some points during this video. Uh, that's just using Emacs on you know Windows or Linux like you usually would because this is an emulator and it's running um, it's emulating the hard disk using the host file system everything's really just a text file so you can go ahead there and just open up those files in your host Emacs uh, but I'm trying to get into the swing of doing everything with the Amiga but one thing I'll, you'll obviously not get is things like code completion and a whole bunch of other functions obviously now that it, uh, Emacs is up to version 24.5 um, there's probably a version of Vim as well for the Amiga I imagine, I'm not too sure, I'm not, a, I'm not much of a Vim user but we're going ahead now and installing Aztec 5 onto the hard drive so remember that at this point in time we've got our Amiga 500 set up um, the bare minimum um, now we're just installing the compiler and its utilities. This particular version, unfortunately, doesn't have uh, crashes pretty much on disk 3, so manual installation has to happen, but uh, we'll get to that point in a bit, and we'll probably speed up this boring bit actually. So running this find command here I can find out all newly added files within the last minute onto the file system so it lists basically the most recent files and the reason I do that is because I want to see um, what new files have been copied over to give me an idea of where the problem file is. I think it's an assembly file. And one of the problems with this installer and one of the reasons why I like doing things manually is because because of this situation. So one of the files is corrupt and we get that message coming up in a second so it decides the installer that it decides to just completely crash, completely finish everything it's doing. That's it. One little corrupt file. Now I'm not going to go ahead and copy anything else which is annoying because all of this is really is a wrapper for just doing manual copying anyway. There's nothing special going on here whatsoever. I just highlighted the most recent files and here we are ASM exec exec base.i can't read source file corrupt okay so you can either retry which of course it will fail again or completely abort no continue option or anything like that so this is going to be another relatively boring section of the video where I'm going to have to continue on the process manually basically 
this I make a mistake here by copying the contents of exec to the ASM folder and it's not really what I want to do I want to copy as you can see here I actually want to copy all those files within the exec folder so I end up building this find command here in order to look no further than the current depth, i.e. this current directory for all things that are of type file. Pull back up everything except for those two files that I have in the um, predicate there. I don't want exec.uaem and devices.uaem because they were there originally. All the rest of the files I want to go ahead and move into exec, which is, as I said, what I originally intended. And we can do that with this command here. And there we are, back to normal in this directory and exec now finally has the contents of which it should have had had the installer worked properly. Um, I do think there were one or two files that didn't get copied over but they're not essential anyway for us so it doesn't make a difference. Um, so at this point this disk got stuck at exec so there are also some directories therefore that it failed to go ahead and install or copy over should I say. So we're just going to go ahead and manually uh, copy those things over. And there are some really important tools on this disk as well, so we couldn't have just stopped and just hoped for the best, because I think uh, well, the, C, the C library is actually on this disk, for example. So you're not going to get too far at all without that, unless you want to re-implement all the standard functions, and that would take a whole bunch of time and effort. We don't want to reinvent the wheel. It's already there for us. One of the other good things about Aztec as well is it copies over some really useful binary tools. Uh, things like cat, things like ls, um, which you don't get by default. And coming from a Unix-like background, those really are awesome tools to have. You know, um, grep, diff, these are things that are used common. It's second nature to me now to cd into a directory and do an ls-l. That's just what I always do implicitly. It's always happening because it's just what I do without even thinking about it. So trying to get used to dir is quite difficult. Um, so here I insert the fourth disk, which is the fourth and final disk for, Az for the Aztec compiler. As text tools, I guess we should probably call it. And actually, disk4 is really important as well because it has, as you can see there, an examples directory. And the examples directory um, is a life saver in a lot of the, uh, a lot of times because it actually has real world examples of code and uh, interfacing with intuition. Uh, very important folder. Yeah, here I am going into the general examples and having a look at closeme.c. Uh, we'll actually look at this again a bit later on. Uh, that was just to prove that it is indeed there. So I actually ended up putting disk 1 back in because I was under the impression that I needed to do something in addition to copying the files over, which you don't have to do. But um, there is an Aztec shell script called Aztec.sh, which just does nothing more but set up uh, some environment variables and additions to the path, um, which is what I'm going to go ahead and have a look at here. You can see that you add the Aztec binaries to the path and some very important uh, variables, such as the include directory, the um, the library path as well. But at this point I'm kind of getting a little bit sick of using Notepad so I go ahead and um, copy over the tools that I need to run and 
get Emacs installed, Micro Emacs. This is one of the good things about having the emulation running as well side by side is um, you can go ahead and modify the things on each side. I always thought that LAR was just used for the Amiga and it is quite often used the Amiga as the, the main extraction and compression utility uh, but having read a little bit more about it it's still actually quite common in Japan and I've uh, read that they ship Windows XP with a default LA compression utility on it because they use it all the time over there still and you'll have noticed my alias CP copy again that's because I'm so used to just typing in CP to copy stuff over. Yeah, so what we're doing here is this is the Aztec dot the Aztec script is above there and we've just split the window so we've got two buffers and we're loading up our startup sequence file. Um, we must go ahead and set these things before load WB gets called. And I mistakenly try and add um, aliases into the startup sequence file as well which doesn't work and I'll actually show you a page out of the Amiga DOS book that I've got which explains why it doesn't work I'll go ahead and copy that and paste it into here so that means that every time Workbench starts we're, it's running those things before well before it loads Workbench could take the echo message out but I guess it's a good way to find out whether or not it actually does get loaded up when we restart the system. So we end up getting an error message here because of course alias is absolutely unknown. nothing to do with Amiga DOS at all alias. It's specifically in connection with the shell. So therefore we need to add that at the we'll add that at the end of this video um, to the shell startup file instead. So we'll quickly remove those and uh, make a quick fix and go ahead and restart the system again. So this time we should just see welcome to Aztec C I'd be interested to find out where Shot got his nice looking Workbench 1.3 from as well, so perhaps if you do look at this video, Shot, you can send a, you can leave a comment which uh, suggests where it might be available or how to get it. And then goes ahead and compile it and uh, converts the C instructions into machine language. So therefore, what have we got? Well, we've got something called main.o and after that we have to link it against the C library as well. The reason I ran main.o there was just to prove that it's nothing more than an object file and it's not linked against anything so it's not going to run. It doesn't know anything about main or anything like that until you link it against the C library. Um, but as you can see there's our hello world output and we're all done. So what we go ahead and do here is make sure that we've got Aztec set up correctly and we go ahead and run um, some of the examples in particular, a very awesome example which demonstrates intuition very well um, called close me where the user has to try and click the close button on the window but the window keeps on running away from you. This is the general examples, and we're just printing out the contents of the make file, and it's too big for a single shell screen, so let's open it up in Emacs and have a look at 
the make file for CloseMe. As you can see, it depends on CloseMe.o32, which is a object file built with 32-bit in integers, etc. Um, so the .c.ov target there at the top is the command that will compile the CloseMe. 32 and once that's created the dependency is there to go ahead and finally link that object file against the C library so here we are now with the close me application so it lets you close it once and there's this really annoying bit where you have to try and click on the close button but the window keeps on moving away from the cursor and if at this point you've had enough you can of course cheat by looking at the source code or in particular what we're going to do here is actually look at the source code comments to give us an idea as to how to go ahead and beat this thing This is what I was talking about in terms of using Emacs on the host machine um, to develop applications on the Amiga, which is quite a useful thing. This is my gen, uh, genuine setup, my IDE that I would use when writing any source code anyway. Emacs is essentially my operating system, I'll run shell in it, I'll do everything I can in it, which is pretty much everything. But what we'll find here is we're scrolling through the close me source file uh, source code here, and we end up coming to a comment, which gives us a good indication of how we can win. It says, "Run away from the mouse." We can be cornered there. So this gives a good indication, but I still fail to end up getting the uh, window to a corner. But this is what I'm trying to do at this point. We get there eventually. But it's a pretty in demonstration. Ports and windows and screens in um, yeah, using intuition. and we get it eventually. And the last thing we end up doing here is we apply the alias that we want to the, uh, the shell startup file rather than startup sequence because this is the appropriate place to do this. Uh, so I'm applying Unix like alias here for copy and move and make do because it's just natural it comes natural to me to go ahead and type things like that and that's really it for the video on the second part here I'm just proving that these commands are working. Of course, they require arguments, so the fact that it's giving me bad args is a good, is a good indication that the alias is working. So here is our Amiga DOS Inside Out book that I've got, and within it a particular page which tells us about the alias command, which is particularly shell only. In addition, I've got the Amiga C for Beginners book and the Advanced book too, which I'll show later on but in particular the Intuition Reference Manual um, created by RJ Michael himself. So thank you very much for joining me on the second episode here. We're all up and running. We've got our compiler, our linker, we've got our tools in order to build our first applications. And we've gone ahead and proved that all of our tools are working.